and we're rolling here. And where are we now? We're Mr. Vinny Caggiano on a Friday in February in Venice. Hello, everybody. Hello. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, so we're just on the cusp of the White Album, but we have one more single to cover, and that would be Lady Madonna. And uh, then we'll get it to the White Album. That's going to be quite, it's not only going to be a chore, it's just, uh, it's very, it's actually very intense. I, I hadn't realized just how complex the music had gotten at that point. You mentioned this last time, in fact, <clears throat> you, I think you talked about how you really didn't have a whole lot of time for the White Album for a long time. And a lot of people didn't. There was a mood to the White Album that didn't, it, it, that's exactly what it was. There was a mood to the White Album that didn't feel good to me. Okay. You know, I could feel, now again, I, I've said it before, I could feel the Beatles disparity with each other and uh, some people like it for the fact that I, I have a buddy who loves the white album it's like one of his favorite, favorite albums. Album. okay and this guy's an accomplished you know my buddy matt he's yeah. an accomplished musician sure. you know composer sax player flute you know little guitar even and uh you know he told me that one of the reasons he likes the white album is because you could hear lennon in this corner working on his stuff and mccartney in his corner working on his to really get an insight into the minds of these musicians. And you can see on the White Album just how different they were as songwriters, you know. Were they, was it a diva, sort of a crossroads kind of thing, where they were really going their separate ways by that point? I would say so. I mean, you know, this was the, the, the short and straight road, as opposed to the long and winding road. Yeah. This is a short and straight road to uh, Let It Be, which I think most people would concur was kind of a dismal out record for the Beatles. Um, by the way, I have a, I got a, a recording of uh, McCartney released. Uh, it's called "Let It Be Naked," yeah. and basically it's without all the Phil Spector nonsense on it. Ah. It's, it's just the Beatles, and it's actually an improvement on the record. Oh, the really? Original. I like it without all that other ah. fluff. Oh, and yeah. He wasn't, you know. Uh, Phil Spector was a one-trick pony when it came to production. It was a big mistake. I don't know why Lennon favored him. I think it's because of his roots in early rock and roll, you know, sure. and his famous wall of sound. But uh, the Beatles weren't about a wall of sound. They really weren't. They were more about these, like, you know, when we were talking about the Hello Goodbye with all this little intricate clockwork, yeah. you know. They were more about that, the subtle details. And, you know, here comes Phil Spector with this literally this <laughs> wall, you know, big chorus and long and winding road. Oh, you know. And, uh, you know, that's just, uh, that's not the Beatles, as far as I'm concerned. I can see why McCartney was pissed off about the whole ah. thing. I really can, because he was, he was a detail writer. I think he learned a whole bunch from George Martin, yeah. you know. But I think Martin learned a lot from him, too. So he's one of those people that when he was in the studio, or like an actor, you know, he's finding out, oh, hey, that, what, what, how the camera works. Finding out other things. Oh, absolutely. While he's yeah. in there, that yeah. sort of thing, yeah. 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 Uh, okay, so we are we are back to Lady McDonough. Lady McDonough. McDonough? <laughs> it's a Scottish Lady McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they 14 the, billion sold. Lady McDonald's. On the flip side is Taco Bell's can. <laughs> 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 Lady, Lady McDonald. Lady McDonald, yeah. Uh, 14 billion rosaries said. <laughs> All right, uh, so what, what do we know about this, what do you know about this song that you can tell us? All right, well, as we proceed into um, the White Album, uh, like, for example, when we get into Glass Onion, there's going to be a lot of stuff around that, and I can't wait to talk about that song. <coughs> but um, there's been so much experimentation, like, the you know, Sgt. Pepper's opened the door for them to... Remember I said how, like, Dylan opened the door for them to write a song about anything, lyrically speaking. Mm -hmm. Sgt. Pepper's opened the door to them to write anything musically. And I'm sure people like Frank Zappa influenced that in the Beatles, you know, the, this ability to go far out in what they're doing, mm -hmm. you know. And that they did on the White Album. I mean, they, they really put a lot of sweat into the songs they wrote, you know. The, I have to admit that. It's just, to me, there's a mood to it, and it's, I don't like the production value. That, that's the bottom line. But what I was about to say is that we see a lot more going on with dominant seventh chords. And I'm going to talk about wandering dominance uh, later on. Basically, and you're going to like this for your songwriting right. stuff, is uh, you can almost employ any dominant seventh after a chord and, and get away with it. All right? That means 12 different dominant seventh chords. Now, you can't do that with minor chords or, or something like that. It just it would sound weird if I went from G to B minor. There's something kind of sour about it. Mm -hmm. Someone might like it. I mean, people, you know, 
Yeah, there's, there's nothing wrong in breaking the rules of music theory. I, I tend to be a little anal about the rules, but there really is nothing wrong with it at the bottom line because what you're going for ultimately is an effect. Well, what's the effect I want? Mm -hmm. You know. And I talked to you about wandering minors and how bad they sound. I gave the example of like, you know, para music, and tension music, you know, that sort of thing with minor chords. But dominant sevenths can really move anywhere, and what it does is it kind of adds a little spice to the moment and then resolves somewhere else, and that's the beauty. Now, um, dominant seventh chords have to be related to the mixolydian mode, which is do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, t flat, do. And also, I always tell my students, think three things together. When you see a seventh chord, all right, think blues, uh, think mixolydian. And the third thing, maybe I just said think two things, because I can't think of what the third thing was. But Mixolydian. Yeah. <laughs> Mixolydian. So, um... Uh, what the reason I bring this up is, all right, I, and I've spoken too about you can put dominant seventh chords into two categories. One is blues, one is European, and we we've talked about right. this. All right, European moves in a basic five to one progression. All right, um, and that includes secondary dominance and everything else. If I if I'm in the key of G and I play E seven to A minor within a song. That E7 to A minor, that's a 5 to 1 relationship, okay? E7 is 5 steps from A minor. Here's the A note, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up the scale to E. Mm -hmm. So that's a European movement of a 7th chord. Anytime, anytime, uh, you see a 7th chord not moving in 5 to 1, and there's plenty of examples of that, and we're about to see it, then you start to think in terms of this is blues theory, all right? This is blues chord movement. All right. So, now the reason I bring this up is because Lady Madonna, it's kind of interesting what happens here. We've probably seen it in a few other Beatles songs, but what we have is, uh, we have our lick. Right? All right. Now that lick implies, when you, when you hear this. As soon as you hear that, this is called the flat third of the A major chord, A to C to C sharp. That's a blues convention, and I teach my, my blues uh, solo guitar players, lead guitar players. If you want to play the blues right and you want to employ the modes, you better flat the third every time a chord comes in and then relax the third. So I have an A7 here. Here's my third. And it doesn't matter if you're going down the scale. You always have to go up from the lower one. Okay. Or up, or if you're traveling up, the scale goes up anyway. Okay. If I were to play a blues and not do that, it would sound very white. Okay. All right. So in other words, I okay. But if I go. Uh, has that blues quality. See the difference? Exactly, but the thing that struck me also on that is when you were playing, originally, when you were playing sort of down the lower part of the neck, um, that it, it actually had uh, a sound that we've heard in country twang. Yes, because blues heavily influenced country, and bluegrass, bluegrass, yeah. you know, you hear that. flat third to the third. That's in bluegrass all over the map. Okay. And that's why I call bluegrass. It's, mm -hmm. it's the country and, and the blues. Well, it could have been the bluegrass of Kentucky, too. But it probably was the bluegrass of Kentucky, but I, you know, I don't really like think to get it's poetic about I don't it. Think because, it's uh, I'm a dork. Sad grass. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so um, what I was going to say was in, in later, because we have this... is outlining is just an A major triad. Those are three notes of A major, but because we have the flat at third, that's the third on the D chord. There's the two chords, A7 and D7. Lady Madonna. Okay, 
So, um, uh, <laughs> we've lost more coffee. <laughs> <laughs> so, this because we have two seventh chords immediately. The 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 theory suggests blues. All okay. right, especially because. Uh, you can argue whether the D chord is a D7 or not, but um, if you have a, this is in the 4 position. If you have a 7th chord in the 4 position, yeah. 1, 2, 3, 4, that's D, D7. That right off the bat is blues. Why? There's no 5 to 1, there's no 5 to 1 relationship to that D7. Okay. All right, it goes D7. If it was a 5 to 1 relationship, D7 would go to G, like a classical, the better say. immediately says blues. But the interesting thing is, in the verse, he uses the A7, Lady Madonna. He's even got that little bit of the, the minor note against that chord, which definitely says blues. Right? Uh, but the interesting thing is, to segue into the bridge, he uses the A7 as a secondary dominant in the classical 5 to 1 relationship, where A7 will go to D minor. And when you take it out of context, you can really hear it. Yeah. Uh, right? In the context of the song, it slips by real quick. Uh, you see, I, I didn't even know where that was in the song. Right. <laughs> that sort of thing. Oh, we'll, we'll hear that in a second. Okay. <clears throat> in fact, I have it uh, queued up on YouTube. I don't have a copy of Lady Madonna on my computer, so... Mm. All right, so we have A7 to D7, enhanced by the lick. He's in his right hand on the piano. He's playing the A7. He's playing the lick at the bottom. Da, 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 da. So we get... Oh. All right, so A7 to D7, lady. Now we have there, F, G to A. All right, this has been used, this is such a cliche, it's been used over and over and over and over and over again. And sometimes if you want to really do a cornball thing, it's like a... <laughs> you know, that, right? <laughs> so uh, anyway, that Isn't F, Isn't that G the intro to another Beatles tune? Some Actually, space be, uh, Yeah, you know what's this off pepper? Space uh, Yeah, no, that's, uh, that's really, really common. And you have to be careful with it because it can be corny. Uh -huh. In fact, Billy Shears, the way that comes in is kind of like campy the way they're doing it. Yeah. You know, da 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 Billy Shears. Well, you know. Know, that's the music hall stuff, the influence, yeah. Now, the FGA, I can go into really complex stuff about this. We've done this before, but uh, if you took the key of C, its relative minor is A minor. All right. All right. A minor and the key of A minor and C are related inside the same key. Okay. But what we're in A. All right. A major. So again, you're messing with relative and parallel minor in the sense that, um, well, let's, this is this is a relative parallel minor situation that I brought up before, where you, you mix the two together. What I'm trying to say here, uh, let me see if I can put this pretty easily. The 1, the 4, and the 5 of C, okay, are F, G, C. 1, 4, 5, right? right? Now, the relative minor of C is A minor, but we're turning it into A major, all right? Same root, so there's a relationship by the root, okay. through the root. Now what we're doing is, even though we're in A root, we're taking two chords from C, F, G, and A. Normally, in the key of C would go to A minor. Right. Like uh, or uh, A minor G F, right? Mm -hmm. But in this case and, and notice too this it's the Picardy third effect where you're expecting to hear the minor sound and the major comes in. And what that does is it brings the dawn. You know, when you hear the major sound where you expect the minor, 
there's a kind of spiritual lift that happens, a lift in the mood of the music. Instead of going... But if I wanted to give that progression a happy ending... Like the Beatles have done so many times. I'm sorry, but any time you say the Picardy Third, all I can think of is Star Trek. <laughs> oh, Picardy. I guess, yeah. I think of rum. Oh, all right. <laughs> Picardy. <laughs> right, so, um, I know that sounds like a, a lot of talk about this, but, you know, you could kind of just kind of, I could, I could explain it, like, in a simpler sense, is that if you have a major root, go down two whole steps with majors and, and come up, go down or up from or to that major, you'll get an effect. Rock and roll hoochie coo. It does the same thing. There are millions of songs that do this. Okay. Uh, either F and G to A minor or F and G to A major. The A major gives you that triumphant feeling, that feeling of right. dawning. Okay. So now, um, all right, so that's an analysis of why the F G going to the A. So we have A7. Look at that. 